This is the most expensive knife I have ever purchased. It's a Misono brand Tsujihiki slicer made in Japan, engraved with a dragon, and extra finely sharpened before sale. When you buy a knife like this, the first thing the salesperson tells you during checkout is to only wash it by hand. But this is my new dishwasher, and it has this cool third rack up top that I've never seen before, since this top top rack is as far as you can get from the water jets and detergent dispenser, and low profile enough to only allow for a couple horizontal items that won't bang into each other, I'm wondering if that means it could potentially be gentle enough to do the unthinkable to wash my knives in the dishwasher. So I bought this fancy blade and without even using it once, just so I could only see the effects of the dishwasher, I placed it on that top rack, set the dishwasher to its shortest, gentlest cycle and ran it. You're not gonna believe this, but it came out still perfectly sharp. Look at that magazine paper slicing action. But it did suffer noticeable harm. The original idea for this video was to run it through the dishwasher at least a dozen times, but after just one run, the handle started to look all bleached out. You can see what it used to look like by the sticker that I peeled off afterwards. I even hung out on standby to open the appliance the second it finished its cycle so it wouldn't be sitting in steam for any longer than it needed to, but the metal was already visibly rusted. So yeah, it's still mighty sharp, but this blade has a significant amount of carbon in the metal, and for the same reasons you wouldn't place a carbon steel pan in the dishwasher, you wouldn't want to do it to a carbon rich steel knife. Any viewers who collect precious knives saw this coming. You can't leave factory fresh steel wet for more than like 10 minutes without it starting to develop rust, so the inside of a dishwasher is far too hostile of an environment. The water is steaming hot, and that steam is hitting every nook of every surface of everything inside for hours at a time. Plus, dishwasher detergent is significantly harsher than dish soap. I thought best case scenario I could have made some earth chattering expose about how it's totally fine to throw knives into the dishwasher, but it's not, and I was a fool for trying. The end. Until of course I tried it again. This has been the budget pick by tons of chefs throughout the years, the Victorinox chef's knife with Fibrox handle. I put this one through the top top rack dishwasher test and it performed much better. The blade is made of stainless steel, which is like 1% carbon, and the handle is made of plastic, so it's not gonna warp, wear, bleach, or crack the way a wood handle would. This knife was designed to withstand commercial grade food service, not to be remarkable on any merit other than value. I'm always happy to advise beginner cooks to stock up on tools at the restaurant supply store where everything is cheaper and more durable. So if you're the type to drive a Toyota and wear Kirkland signature clothing, you might be more interested in kitchen tools that can be ridden hard and put away wet. Idiomatically speaking, of course. I dug up this more rigorous demonstration from a channel called Great Edge Limited where he takes two F. Dick brand knives with stainless steel blades and plastic handles, doesn't use them at all, and washes one by hand three times and the other in a dishwasher three times. This precision device called a best tester showed a negligible difference in the sharpness between the two. So it's not unreasonable to conclude that if you have a spot in the dishwasher to put stainless steel knives with waterproof handles where they won't bounce around off of any other surfaces, you should be fine doing so, provided you're willing to sharpen them a little bit more frequently, say five times a year instead of four. This advice is directly at odds with the general advice, but that's general advice. Reality is way more complicated. Like if these cheap tools can handle the abuse, but this one can't, where would that put, say, a global brand knife? It's all metal all the way to the handle, but if something does go wrong, it costs three times as much as the more replaceable pick. And then what about the even finer side of the spectrum? My slicer is gonna bounce back from this experiment, but some brands are so high in carbon with such delicate wooden handles that one round in this machine will irreversibly destroy them. For mine, I'll try abrasives and mineral oil, and even in a worst case scenario, the knife shop that sold it to me said that they're confident in their ability to professionally restore it. If I could tie a bow on everything I learned in this experiment, it would be this. Putting a fancy knife in the dishwasher is like chugging a handle of fireball. You know it's not a smart thing to do, it's not gonna earn you any points from anyone whose respect you should be after, and you're gonna pay for it in some way. Even then, maybe this comparison isn't harsh enough because I'd personally prefer a whole Sunday spent nursing a cinnamon antifreeze hangover to one spent repairing a 10 inch long blade just because I wanted to save two minutes of effort. But putting a replaceable, waterproof, 
stainless steel knife in the dishwasher and drying it quickly is more like smoking a cigarette. It's not good by any means, but the sole act of doing it maybe a couple times in a given year isn't gonna be a disaster. The real risk is that of making it into a regular habit, and that's a dark path full of wasted money and a shortened lifespan of the knife. This simile is over. The whole experience reminds me of my favorite half-joking, half-serious chapter of Rory Sutherland's Alchemy. If you wanna have a kitchen that's full of nothing but dishwasher safe items, all you gotta do is simply put everything in the dishwasher every time. That way, whatever doesn't survive gets weeded out. The problem with this approach, obviously, is that if you make rules around what's allowed and what's prohibited based on narrow, inflexible parameters just because they make sense on paper, the real-life consequences can be expensive, wasteful, and generally miserable. That reminds me, I gotta go file my taxes. Stay right there. Visky has paid to be mentioned at the end of this video. Visky makes high quality contemporary glassware along with just about everything else you need to make fancy cocktails at home. Barware, wine tools, ice molds, everything but the actual alcohol. Personally, I've got my eye on this two ounce flask that holds a 54 gauge cigar in it. There's been a lot of talk during this video about cheap tools versus nice ones. And if you'd like to get your glassware on the nice side of that spectrum, take a look at Visky's Meridian line of products. It takes classic silhouettes in lead-free crystal, adds an elegant rippled texture, and then dips the rim in gold-plated steel to finish it off. This is the type of precious barware that you'll want to wash by hand and keep forever, but sold at a reasonable price. I think that my cocktail videos are somewhat notorious for using bare bones, mismatched, and sometimes plastic tools, and thanks to Visky, I finally have a proper set, complete with a shaker tin and a weighted bar spoon. If you grow weary of serving all your beverages in classic lowball glasses, or worse, plastic cups, go check out what Visky has to offer. If you use the code Shaquille15, you'll get 15% off site-wide. That's visky.com with the offer code Shaquille15. In fact, I'm gonna go use my own code to buy that cigar flask that I want. Goodbye.